Hi, my name is Tim, Technical Support and Installation Engineer at ATRsoft. In this session I will take you through the steps of installing custom tools in a multi-user environment. Ok, let's get started. Activate the installer file on the server. You can select any of the provided languages to install. I will select English and press OK. On the welcome screen, press Next. Read the license agreement and accept it to continue installation. Then press Next. In this dialog, type in your user information. Type or paste in the serial number you have received from your reseller and click Next. I'll select the custom version and click Next. From the custom setup dialog, I'll deselect all the client tools except custom tools administration. This is not needed either but recommended. I'll also select to install the custom tools license manager. If no SQL server is present, the custom tools database should also be selected. This will install SQL 2008 or 2 for custom tools. You can view or review the standalone installation video for details about this step. We already have a SQL server where we want the custom tools database to be installed, so this option is not selected. The custom tools service is only used when you have linked external data sources, so this should not be selected in most cases and can easily be added later if required. I'll leave the other options off. Click Next. This is where we select the SQL server we want to install to. Your company IT manager should know if the user has the required SQL permissions or not. If not, use the SQL server credentials. Again, this will have to be provided from company IT. I'll use the SQL user, so I type in the user credentials. Then click Next. Take note of the port number used by the license server. We need to add this as a firewall rule later. Click Next. Then install to perform the installation. The installation has now completed and you can choose to view the watch new file and maybe the installer log. I will unselect the options and press finish. Let us access the custom tools license manager. You will find this in the program list under custom tools followed by the version number. In this case, Custom Tools 2013. Press License Manager to launch the application. In the dialog displayed, type in your user information. Keep the Activate License option as shown and press Next. Our license has been activated. Click Finish. The License Manager is displayed and under Products we can see the license count. I'll set this to the CT admin for now so we can see if the license server detects used licenses. Then I'll launch Custom Tools Administration. Notice that after a refresh in the license manager we can see that one user is occupying an admin license. In the administration tool we need first to create a custom tools database. I select create database option in the user interface. Click next in the wizard. Type in a database name. There are several additional options you can combine. I will just keep all settings as default. Then click next. Type a name for the profile to be created or keep the default and select the content of this. I'll keep Machinery Design. Click Next and then Finish to begin installing database with options. The database is installing. When it completes, select Close. We now have a Custom Tools database. Let us log in. Admin. No password. The administration tools show that a database and a profile was created. There is a container for users and one for groups. We will get more in depth with this in another session 
where I'll cover the administration tool detailed. Access the Windows Firewall. I'll go through the network icon and select Network and Sharing Center. Select Windows Firewall. Advanced Settings. Inbound Rules. And New Rule. In the wizard, define a port rule. Next, type in 1433 for SQL and 50052 for License Manager. Click Next. Use Allow the Connection option and click Next. Define the networks where this rule should apply. I'll keep all selected and click Next. Type in a name for the rule. Use a good name that explains what this rule is for. Optionally, you can put in a more detailed description. Click Finish, and we are done. First, you need to activate the installer file. You can select any of the provided languages to install. I will select English and press OK. On the welcome screen, press Next. Read the license agreement and accept it to continue installation. Then press Next. In this dialog, type in your user information. Type or paste in the serial number you have received from your reseller and click Next. Here I'll select the custom version and click Next. From the custom setup dialog, I'll select all the client tools. I'll leave the other options off. Click Next. Type in or browse for the SQL Server database we have just created. I'll use the SQL credentials. Then click Next. If you receive any errors, make sure that SQL ports are opened on the firewall and that your credentials match. I will not cover troubleshooting in this session. Type in the name or IP address of the license server. Notice the port number. This should match the one we defined in the firewall. Click Next. Then install. The installation has now completed and you can choose to view the what's new file and maybe the installer log. I will unselect the options and press finish. Let's make sure custom tools is activated inside SolidWorks. We are prompted to log into Custom Tools database. Log in with admin and no password. The installation has included a set of templates and sheet formats. These are configured to work with the default profile we installed. And you should select yes if you want to test these. With Custom Tools started, we notice a new toolbar. This is custom tools, so the add-in is activated correct. Let us preview this very quick by making a new part. Select custom tools tab and then properties. The property pane opens and we can see that the profile is working and ready to test. Thank you for watching and please visit our site for more information and more videos.